we are going to go ahead and sand down this stock. Now I don't use, I have a rotary sander, uh, but I don't use it. I don't like the idea of using the uh, motorized or electric sanders on these, uh, just because it can get out of hand really quick. So I, uh, I'm going to start off just sanding off this tape and try to get this finished down a little bit and we'll see how it goes see what she looks like when we're done sanding her down all right we got some 120 here we're gonna start off with here we go Look at the way that makes that thing pop right there. That's gonna look good. Alright, so now we got most of this sanded down. Gonna finish up the top here. But a lot of these nicks and stuff that were in the back of this have pretty much been sanded down to the point to where they're not gonna be as visible. Need to take a little bit more to this, get that off of there. But I really love the way these squirrels and these indents and the accents popped out once you start sanding it. So uh, when we go and put the stain over top of it, we'll just lay it all the way over. These darker spots will stay darker. We're doing a lighter, closer to the natural look is what he wants. So we're gonna keep it that lighter color. So you just gotta be careful with this because it is wood and you wanna take the stain off but you don't wanna take too much material off because you can't put it back. All right, now as far as the inside of this goes, I really don't get too caught up on the inside because, you know, the gun itself, the components are gonna fit inside here. So I really don't get too crazy with it, uh, but I do lightly sand the inside of this down so it's a smooth surface. Um, it's not so much to take the, the stain off as it is to make sure that we're meeting with a nice, smooth surface. Let me put the receiver in here. Again, you don't want to remove too much material because you can't put it back. All right, now that we've got the stock pretty much sanded down with the 120, we're going to take this 220 here and we're going to just smooth this thing out, make it nice and nice and smooth to the touch. Uh, my buddy did decide that he wants to put these swivel mounts on it, so we'll go get those swivel mounts later uh, at Academy, pick them up pretty cheap. Uh, but we'll put those on there so that way he can have a sling on there and uh yeah and then we'll start putting the the prepping materials and then stain it and then we will seal it so we went ahead and got uncle mike's uh this one says it's good for the ruger 1022 the biggest thing that i wanted to make sure we got is there's a longer screw and a shorter screw in this one the biggest thing is we do not want to protrude through this front end here you can kind of see how much meat's on there and that longer screw would go right through that so you want a shorter screw that it won't go all the way through this. If it pops out just a little bit, you're fine, but you don't want any contact with the barrel, any contact with the barrel. So smaller one up here, larger one in the back. And uh, let's go ahead and let's bust this loose. So like I said before, there's a longer one and a shorter one. You can tell that is quite a bit shorter. So this one will be going in the forearm, this one will go in the buttstock. So just like any good wood project, we need to find a, a bit that is going to be a little bit smaller than the one, than the bolt itself is going through here. And this is going to be perfect. So you can see that on either side of this drill, it is part of the screw. So this will work great. It'll still allow us to get some meat on the, on the stock without splintering the stock so i'm going to be putting it right about here now when you're doing this 
go ahead and make it to where this is going to be flush with the stock. And the reason I say that is because I've seen a lot of guys, they'll put it, they'll put the gun flat on the table, and then they'll come in and they'll put this this connector piece right here. Well, when you do that, you see that it makes it cattywampus like that. Go ahead and run it with the with the actual buttstock. Make it to where the bottom of this bolt head or screw head is flush with the with the stock. And then the same thing up here. Now up here is flatter on the forearms flatter, so you can pretty much just go straight into this one. But when you're dealing with the stock, make sure that you come in at a slight angle, so that way when this gets screwed down, again, it's flush with the actual stock. So pressing down on this, going in at an angle with the stock, starting slow, and you want to make sure it's dead center. Dead center from right to left, because you don't want it to be one side or the other. So dead center. All right, so again, you want to be in the middle. So we are all set on that. We are ready to go. We'll put this up here. All right, so we're just about ready to start staining. So what I do is I use a Minwax pre-stain to take care of any blotchiness, fill in any spots that it can. Uh, basically, it's just a conditioner. It's a wood conditioner that this is. Um, and then with this particular one, we're using Classic Oak, which is a stain and polyurethane clear coat all in one. So we won't need it. However, we do have it here if we use it. Normally, I use a gunstock stain, um, and it requires both. It requires all the pre-stain, the stain itself, and then this polyurethane cover. Um, but this one actually has them both in it. So we'll be using this. He wanted the lighter color on this because that's the original stock on this morning was a lighter color. So he wants the original color. So with this pre-stain, it says to apply it within two hours or you apply, apply the stain within two hours of applying the pre-stain. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add, we're gonna basically just use a, a basic shop towel here, just paper towel, to apply a nice even coat across there. We're gonna wipe off any excess uh, after about 15, 20 minutes. And then we're gonna let it sit for an hour. We're gonna come back and we're going to apply our stain. Uh, we may or may not put a second coat. It just depends on what we see when we get to that part. So we're definitely going to do the pre-stain and then the first coat of stain today and then we'll see what happens. Uh, we may need a second coat. If we do, we'll do that tomorrow. Alright, now we're going to let this sit for an hour. And then we will be right back. All right, so we're back. It's been an hour. I looked everywhere for my cheesecloth. That's what I usually like to use when I'm dealing with a stain, but I was not able to find my cheesecloth. Of course, I'll find it when I'm looking for something else. But anyway, I have a sponge here, which will do the job just as well. So I'm trying to, I'm gonna start from the bottom here, work my way up to the top, and try to get a nice even coat all the way around. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get all this. All it's gonna do is make it a little bit darker and just give it a nice even coat all the way up and then we'll let it sit overnight come back tomorrow and see where we're at nice and even coat of stain looks good make sure you get all the crevices look at that look how well that popped off of there one of these sides the squirrel is messed up from hitting something but when you sand that off there and give it a nice clean coat man that's gonna come out nice so we're gonna set it up over here where it's not going to touch much if anything we're going to let that sit till tomorrow and then see what we get all right so we've got this stock all finished this looks really nice it's going to look really good once we get it on the gun 